Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. Are you in the dark about security and illumination in your property? Well, this little ominous brown box could help you out. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at some PIR lights which are of uh, great value and actually I should give a big shout out to uh, Kath's channel, or our sub channel, which is ShopSmart, which you can find on Facebook and also we do post on various other media outlets, so if you want to follow it there will be some links in the video description. So ShopSmart, if you're not sure what it is, is uh, something we work on, basically we get sent deals daily all around the UK, so Amazon.co.uk shoppers, you can pick up some really, really awesome bargains, which is why we're doing this video. We actually did need some outside PR lights. They uh, they generally don't last forever. Weather, water, just time, eventually they do tend to fail. So you don't really want to spend a great deal on them, but also you don't want to go overly cheap on them and get some real rubbish, which we've, uh, we've certainly had in the past. But these are actually really good, and they were actually reduced from, I think it's around about £35, which you can still buy them for now, down to something like £12.99 or something ridiculous like that. So I figured for £13, hey, lucky 13 will be in it to win it. So let's go through, take a look at the actual PR lights. We'll go through the unboxing process, show you all the features, etc. Then we're gonna go out, we're gonna install them, and then we'll come back a little bit later in the video, show you what they're actually like in the nighttime, so you can get an idea of how well they're gonna illuminate your area that you need to do, the flexibility, charging times, and all those kinds of things. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we actually got inside the packaging. So inside the packaging, we got these uh, a pair of these great PIR lights. So 132 LEDs, IP65 rated, so semi-waterproof. Obviously, don't submerge them in water, but for things like snow, rain, hailstones, all that kind of stuff, going to be absolutely fine. Also, they've got up to 1,500 lumens, and I've uh, got to be honest with you, they are extremely bright. We did actually try these out for a bit of a laugh on one of our live streams, and yeah, these are pretty much almost the same kind of power output as our studio lights. They are pretty insane for what they are. So you have got three sections of the lighting. So you can have a floodlight area down into maybe a walkway. And then if you want to maybe, again, this is probably gonna be mounted on a wall or something. So you can actually move the actual lights around and aim them to where you need them to be. So maybe down a corridor, that kind of thing. Again, the same that way. Or you could just angle them right down so again, if you want to have a kind of wide dispersal, so light coming out the front and then lighting down an area underneath, maybe you've got an old coal bunker or something like that and it's outside the house and you want to see what you're doing when you're shoveling the coal. Probably not the same thing that a lot of people are going to do, but essentially the principle is the same. These are very, very flexible, as you can see. So yeah, you can aim the lights wherever you want to and they are extremely bright. The solar panel is on the top, so obviously you do want to have that aimed ideally towards where you're going to get a lot of sun during the day, that kind of stuff. This actually held onto the wall by a, a very simple bracket, and I'll show you some measurements on the screen so you can see what they're like. But essentially three screw holes, and there's this like clip situation, and the clip just goes into the back there. So if you do actually need to take them off the wall or something, it's not too involved, you literally just kind of lever it off, lift it off, and then you can make changes, which you may want to do because actually these have got multiple lighting patterns, which I'll show you what it says in the instructions on the screen now. But essentially the switch on the back, you've got four positions. So the first position is off. The second position or the main on one is basically the lights on and these are now in PIR mode. So when there is uh, darkness, these only work in darkness. There is actually a sensor on the front there, as you can see. So when it gets dark, they automatically come on and if you've got it in PIR mode, it will only come on if someone passes through the beam from the PIR light. So as per usual, you walk past a section and they will come on. They stay on for about 30 seconds, which should be enough for most people to kind of just walk to wherever they're getting, find your keys, unlock your door, that kind of thing. The next setting is a, an all night setting. So you just switch it across again. And then when it's darkness, these will come on and they'll be in dim mode all night. So from the moment the sun goes down to when obviously the sensor reaches the dark spot then these will just come on and they'll be dim all through the night until sunrise so if you're maybe a workplace or you've got people coming in at your house all hours of the day maybe you've got uh, kids and you all work different patterns etc etc then this is going to be handy just to give a bit of illumination or maybe you've got animals or maybe you've just got security concerns maybe you've got an outside camera and it doesn't always pick up the picture as best because in night vision they don't so having a little bit of extra light might help your camera to be able to see who is actually prowling around in your property the last mode is very similar again, so this is dim plus PIR, 
So this will be in dim mode all the time when it's dark and when someone passes in front of that sensor, they'll come on full brightness, which uh, will be a deterrent for most thieves and would be prowlers and possibly even things like foxes, badgers, etc. in your garden, I know for sure. Yeah, in our local neighborhood, we've got tons of foxes, so a light coming on in the night generally will tend to scare them off and stop them from uh, doing what they do in your garden. So that is the lights itself. Battery-wise, I'll put some specs on the screen now, and actually I better read them off here so I get it accurate. The battery, from what I can recall, is a 2200 milliampere battery, so that's pretty decent. The solar panel is 5.5 volts running at 2 watts, and you've got 132 LEDs, as I said, rated power is 8 watts and you've got the dimensions there and the net weight, etc. So you can see how big it is and you can take some measurements and see if it actually fit where you want it to go. But essentially that is pretty much it. So you get everything you need in the pack. You get the batteries obviously pre-installed in there. You get two mounting brackets, obviously for two lights. You can, if you want, you can buy this as a single pack. So if you don't need two, which maybe you don't, you can just buy one. Those still retail round about the sort of anything between 13 and 25 pounds. Again, if there's any bargains, you'll find them on ShopSmart when they come out. You also get the mounting hardware, so you get four wall plugs and four screws, but essentially it's pretty straightforward. You've got three holes there, so if you want to, if it's maybe going to possibly a fence post in your garden, which is something which we're probably going to do, then you could if you want to. Maybe even get away with just putting one screw through there, wood screw straight through into your wooden panel, and that is it. You're pretty much done. There's not a great deal to do. It's very, very simple. I would imagine if I had the screw and the, the drill in my hand, it would be less than, less than a minute. To install it it really is that simple really it's going to be mostly time consuming working out where in your garden is going to be the best place to get sunlight the majority of the time to actually recharge these batteries obviously being in the uk uh, sunlight is one of those things that we are we're not overly well endowed with uh, maybe a couple of weeks of the year but the rest of the time it's actually like being in a tupperware bowl it's very gray and very murky so be interested to see how well these do so anyway that is the uh, the intro these are the parts you get let's get on and install it in the garden Okay, so we've got our screw mounted, which uh, Kath will show you now, which is up there. So that's mounted on the wall relatively easily. Just uh, all you need to use is a straightforward five and a half mil masonry drill bit. And we've only used one rather than all three because the wall, as you can possibly tell already, has got the sort of texture coating, so there's not gonna be any movement sideways as long as one screw is in firmly. And this thing's pretty light anyway, so all we need to do now is to hook on these bits onto the hook. So I'm going to climb up and do that. There we go. I think it's angled. We'll find out later when we uh, get a little bit of darkness and hopefully we can see what it's like and make any adjustments. Luckily, it's just on a twist swivel, so it should be absolutely fine. So, on to the next one. So, next one, we've got our bracket. This one we're going to attach actually to the, uh, the fence post here. It doesn't need to be particularly high, so this is going to be absolutely fine. So we've got our three screws, and I'm just going to drill straight into the, uh, into the wood there. That looks about central. I think actually with that, I think one screw is going to be absolutely fine. You could if you want to put the other three in, actually I might just put one more in just to be on the safe side. There we go, that's that done. So next thing is to hook this on again, just those hooks there, over the top there. And there we go. Now we're lucky that the sun comes up, kind of goes over and sets down over there. So having the solar panel there is going to be uh, pretty much the best position. And we can bend those around. That'll give us a bit of light in various directions. You can, if you want to, there is actually screws on there. So you can actually just screw those in a little bit tighter to keep them in place wrong screwdrivers to do that but there we go a little cinch and it's done so now all we need to do is uh wait for some darkness which probably won't be too far away 
Okay, so this is going to be a weird one. So we're starting off in the uh, the kitchen, which is currently extremely dark. So yeah, let's uh, let's go outside and see how quickly the light gets triggered and how illuminating it is. As you can see, it's getting pretty dark here. This camera actually does a, a pretty good job in low light, well, relatively. And there is the light just up there. So let's move a little bit. And there we go. It's pretty bright. Hopefully you can uh, you can see that pretty good. That has lit up this area pretty darn well. That is actually quite impressive. Even lighting up the neighbours. So we've got the um, the light as you can see angled in three directions. So we've got the main light beaming down and we've got the kind of the offset ones as well which uh, actually do provide quite a lot of light that thing is really bright it's actually making the uh, the camera go a little bit crazy so yeah anyway you can see it uh, it lights up this area absolutely perfectly let's just take a walk up through the garden as you can see it's uh, getting pretty dark right now And there we go, that's picked up. Well, that has made uh, quite a big difference. As you can see, you actually see the garden now. That is pretty awesome. So yeah, it's lit up uh, that section pretty well. It's always difficult to tell what the lighting's like until it's actually kind of pitch black, but yeah, maybe we'll uh, we'll take a look at this a little bit later, but let's have a look at the uh, the other end of the garden. So yeah, this is uh, what it's normally like. So this is up against the wall. And that's with the light off. There's everything gone. Let's walk towards it again, see how quickly it turns on. So I am approximately best part of 10 to 12 foot away from the lamp, I would guess. Something along those lines. And you can see the one at the other end of the house turned off now. So let's have a walk down here and see the difference it makes. Boom, there we go. It really has lit up that entire area. That is pretty impressive from a battery powered lamp. It is 8 watts, so it should look pretty good. Hmm, most impressive. And looks like it stays on for about 30 seconds. The other one further into the garden now has actually turned off. And actually, what I could do if I stick this here, hopefully, it won't fall over. Just to like see me there, so I'm gonna run off in there. <laughs> Not sure if you got any of that, but anyway, so yeah, pretty impressive. Lights of the garden really well. Try and get a bit more footage in the uh, pitch black darkness later. You can see there's a little bit of light left in the clouds at the moment, but it is uh, essentially kind of dusk. So we'll be back later. Okay, it's uh, properly dark now, and uh, we don't think we can even focus on things. It's so dark. So let's go and have a look. So I'm just about to see. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Oh, here comes a cat. Oh, flame. He didn't turn the light on. Oh, that certainly did. So there we go. It is now pretty much pitch black. And that's actually lit up pretty well. You 
can see pretty easily. So let's go and see what the other one's like. Not bad. Gives a pretty decent spread, actually. Let's see if we can see any spiders. No, none at the moment. Anyway, very bright. And it seems to be lighting up pretty much towards the end of the garden. And vice versa, if we spin round. There's I think I just about see the cat there. Here comes the cat. He fling. Hello. So definitely uh, much brighter. Well, we'll see actually. If we wait 30 seconds, it should turn off altogether. And that is what we're left with. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, pretty dark. That's better. There's the other one. Not bad. You see, there's the uh, one of the neighbours outside mains lights there, and yeah, I think ours is a little bit brighter. <laughs> anyway, there you go. That is the uh, the light settings. Actually, I suppose I should actually try it on the uh, the dim setting, the all night setting, just so you can see what that is like. Wouldn't be a proper test without it. Go on, flame. Yeah, was it? So let's turn that over on. So there you go, that's on the dim setting now. So the dim setting would be just like a marker. So you can just about see what's going on with it. But yeah, it doesn't really light up a great deal. But as you walk past, it doesn't change. So if we put it on the other mode, that's on the brightest mode, so that's because we've walked in front of it. So if we walk away and give it about 30 seconds, then it should go back into the dim mode. There he is. So there we go, that's gone but into dim mode and the flame has pretty much disappeared. And with the ISO setting on this camera, yeah, that's basically it. It's, it's basically a marker light. Really difficult to see. So if we move, and there we go, it becomes much brighter. So I think we should uh, wrap up there. Let's say goodbye to Flame. Hello, Flame. Can't see you, mate. There we go. Anyway, so that has been the uh, the 132 LED PIR light. And actually, I better put it back into uh, normal mode. So off and on again. Oh, look, we've got flies and all sorts all over it already. Bad bugs. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's uh, wrap this up. Okay, so you've seen the uh, the lamp in use outside in the garden. Actually, what do you think? Not too bad at all. Now, obviously, I am using a DJI Pocket 2 camera to record the footage outside, so the lighting may not be the best, and obviously it isn't going to recreate what I saw with my own eyes. It was actually a little bit brighter than 
you could see from the camera. So yeah, that's on me, user error definitely. But overall, actually I'm very pleased with these. For the price that we paid for them, definitely a no-brainer. Around about 13, 14 pounds for the pair was absolutely insane. Uh, again, if you want to see more deals like that, then you can head over to ShopSmart on Facebook or maybe watch some of the videos on our YouTube channel also. Again, links will be in the video description. Normal price for these, looking around about the £30, £35, which even at that price, actually, for the convenience factor, for the brightness, and yeah, I think they're just actually very good little units. If you live in somewhere where you can't run a, a big, long power cord or because it's dangerous or just inconvenient or maybe just too expensive to do, these are a really good idea. The battery seems to last for a really long time. It went all night through the night and yeah, no issues at all. Still seems to be working absolutely fine. Obviously longevity is gonna be one of those things which I can't really report on, but maybe we'll do an update on this video a little bit later if there's enough interest in it. But I think looking at the pros and the cons, so the cons initially I suppose really would, maybe you can't get it for the really good price that we got it for, which yeah, is here nor there. Other cons, a little bit more adjustment on the main light would have been better to enable it to either angle up or angle down a little bit more. It is kind of, it's not fixed, but there is certain levels where you can't go up to. So the higher you have it, the easier it is to angle the light downward. So that does work beneficial. If it's high up, if it's low down, then you may have issues actually adjusting the light. But other than that, really, that's about the only cons that I can see. It seems to be very bright. The battery seems to work very well. Also, you may find if you're in an area where there's not a great deal of sunshine, then yeah, charging may be an issue. So yeah, if you're in Iceland or somewhere like that where they don't get a lot of daylight sometimes, then you may struggle. But for those of you that get a reasonable amount of daylight, it should be absolutely fine. So let's look at the pros. Now the pros, obviously, price potentially, even at the normal retail price, not a bad price at all really for a pair of them, and even for the individuals, anywhere between sort of 15 to 20 pounds or so, not a bad price, especially due to that flexibility. Super easy to mount. You've got a little bracket in there so you can use one screw into wood if you want to or just put a masonry screw in as we did on the wall. And it just is very, very straightforward and simple to fit. You don't have to worry about electrical wiring. You don't have to worry about any kind of dangers with that. Someone getting electrocuted if you do it yourself with the DIY cable coming out of a mains cord. Also, don't forget you've got those three lighting settings. So, well, four technically if you include the off setting. So you've got the, the kind of the PIR mode, the normal PIR mode. So it's off all the time. You walk past it, it turns on for 30 seconds. Absolutely brilliant. The other mode, obviously the kind of uh, dust tail dawn mode, so it just comes on in the low power mode, which would be fine for if you've maybe got a long driveway, have a couple of them up a driveway just as markers so that people can see walking up and down, or maybe if you're coming into the driveway late at night or whatever, walking in, really, really handy. The third mode being the kind of dim mode or low power mode, and then going into PIR sensing mode, and then activating for 30 seconds if something triggers it or walks past. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And of course the off mode, if you're actually just want to charge them up and not lose any battery, turn them off. And if you're maybe away or just not using them, they're not going to run down the battery very much. So yeah, potentially that is a good thing as well. Obviously eco-friendly as well, because they're, they are using rechargeable batteries, which I guess do eventually kind of expire, but certainly cheaper than using electricity. You're using the sun's rays to recharge the batteries. So yeah, that's a, a very much green credential these days. So anyway, let me know what you think about these one in the comment section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.